When it comes to creatures of urban legend, there is perhaps none as iconic as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. For years, people have argued about the veracity of these creatures, with people claiming to see them being written off as crazy or lying. With all the strange things that have happened already in 2023, maybe it's time to open our minds a bit and stop ignoring some of these sightings. Hello, I'm Andrew Boyd, and though I see many strange creatures while here in this dark void dimension, I've yet to come across a Sasquatch. Bigfoots, or big feet, I guess, are commonly spotted in the Rocky Mountains, with many being in the Canadian province of Alberta. And there is a great compilation of reported sightings at SasquatchAlberta.com. Being a Berta boy myself, I thought I would go through their archives to tell you about the top 5 Bigfoot sightings in 2023 we can't ignore anymore. Let us begin our journey. Number 5. Bigfoot Go Wah! Our first sighting was made by a resident living just west of Pigeon Lake, who was fortunate enough to witness a pair of strange creatures near their home that were unlike anything they had ever seen or heard before. As they themselves put it, I was on an acreage and looked to the west near a tree line and a fence line about 75 yards from me. At first, I thought it was a man coming out of the trees. Then I looked again, and this huge beast was turning around. I saw the side profile, then I saw his back as he swiftly went back into the trees. I would estimate eight to nine feet tall and several hundred pounds. It was cinnamon in color, and I noticed the muscles rippling on its shoulders. It was cinnamon in color, and I noticed the muscles rippling on his shoulders and back as it went back into the woods. It looked like it did not have a neck. I also thought I had noticed another one crouched down not far from the big one. About 15 minutes earlier to this, I was in another part of the yard and had heard a wah, wah, then a tree knock, but really didn't attribute these sounds to anything until I saw the Bigfoot 15 minutes later. Were these creatures members of the infamous Bigfoot family? And were the strange noises the witness heard earlier made by the creature? We may never know for sure. Number 4. A Family Sighting Our next sighting comes from a man who was playing with his siblings when he was a child and saw the creature making its way through the woods. Considering what he saw, he relates a pretty chill story. As he put it, in 1980, our family lived in Morley, Alberta, close to the bridge and the school. We played all throughout that area on motorbikes, making forts in the woods and exploring near the banks of the Elbow River. My older brother was 14 years old, and my sister was about 18 years old. I was only 10 years old. I I remember watching a tall, big figure traverse the foothill behind what is now the community school. What struck me at first was it was very large and moved very fast, though it was not running. The figure was dark against the pale straw-colored hill. I knew immediately that it was not human. It was upright and moved on two feet. I also remember it had a funny-shaped head. In my ten-year-old mind, it was as if he had balanced a cap on the crown of his head instead of pulling it onto his head. It was moving away from us. My sister relates that he was grayish, had hair all over its body, had an oblong head, had no clothes on, and was bipedal and moving quickly. My brother remembers that it was very large, estimating over eight feet, and again, the oblong head. I don't remember what day it was or when it happened. It must have been either just approaching winter or coming into spring. The trees were bare. The bush on the hill he was moving on was scarce. We saw him clearly in the daylight. He was not trying to conceal himself in the trees that ran along the river. He did not stop. None of us remember feeling afraid, and all of us knew what it was. We didn't ever talk about it, but not because we were ashamed or scared. It was as if we had simply seen a moose or something. If you saw Bigfoot with your own two eyes, do you think you would manage to keep as calm as these kids did? I think it would depend on how close the creature was, and whether or not it looked hungry. Number 3. Off-roading in the company truck Our next story features a group of blue-collar Berta boys who were driving one night and saw a Sasquatch, and chose to respond in in the most Burton way possible. I must warn you, this story is extremely Canadian. It was the winter of 1992, I was 19 at the time, and had been working the last year and a half doing seismic work all through Alberta, British Columbia.
Columbia in southern Saskatchewan. We just got back to work from Christmas holidays and we're not working between Valley View and Fox Creek. We were just driving into the staging area one morning. It was snowing like crazy, snowflakes the size of loonies. By the way, for our American audience who are unsure, a loony is this big. Anyways, I was driving the truck at the end of the caravan. It had been snowing so hard, it had been snowing so hard all night and the snow had piled up on the spruce trees looking like walls along the tree lines. So we were driving down a cut line to the staging area and I had come out of the bush into a clearing from the corner of my right eye. I seen a huge black object about 600 yards moving on the edge of the tree line and then drop out of sight. I instantly pushed my clutch and pointing to the trees, I tell the other three guys in my truck, watch. About 15 seconds later, a huge black Sasquatch stood up from below the snow line and walks five to six steps and drops down again. The three guys with me suddenly all yell out, what the f and I throw my shift to first gear, cranking the wheels to the right and hammered it. I was plodding through the deep snow and got about halfway when it stands up quickly, looking right at us and launches itself into the thick spruce trees. You could clearly see its silhouette left behind as it knocked the snow from the trees. Just then, my radio goes off and it's my operator flipping out, asking me what the hell I was doing out there with a new company truck. When we got back to him, he asked me again, so I told him what I had seen. He asked the three other guys and they all said, he seen something huge and black and drove over it. We're not sure what it was. Looked like a huge moose. That night in the hotel, the three of them come to my room and wanted to talk about it and I told them to go away because the time to talk about it had passed and they almost got me fired for chasing a moose. They all got super apologetic and, and said to me, you grow up your whole life thinking it's a story and a myth and it's right there in front of you. Nobody's going to believe you. I replied that people would believe it a lot more if four guys say this is what we've seen, not one saying this is what we've seen and three others lying to themselves. An interesting story to be sure and frankly a typically Albertan response to seeing a mythical creature. Number two, a hunter's encounter. Our next story is the first one where the subjects seem in any danger from the creature, so I imagine it was quite a terrifying experience. As the encounter was reported on albertasasquatch.com, witness was driving down a logging road, bear hunting with his wife and children at approximately 9.30 p.m. when they spotted what appeared to be the rear end of a bear entering the left hand side of a cut line for a power line they were driving by. The witness exited the vehicle and walked down the cut line approximately 50 yards to where the animal had entered the bush line. When he arrived on the right hand side of the cut line, poplar trees of 6 to 8 inch diameter began to shake violently. The witness described it as an explosion of movement in the bush next to him. Immediately he saw two very large hands start to part the trees and bushes with fingers approximately just smaller than a Red Bull can in diameter and approximately the length of his entire hand. The witness was face to face with an animal they can only describe as a Sasquatch. Despite being uphill from where it was standing, the witness could see the forehead and nose well, however the mouth was obscured by bush. The witness described the head to be the width of a basketball, with golf ball sized eyes, a large pronounced brow ridge, a large forehead with little hair, a flattened nose with nostrils the size of two thumbs side by side, and matted hair. The witness describes the eyes as having been dark brown in color with no whites. However the area where the whites of the eyes would be had a purplish tinge of color. The witness also mentioned seeing eyelashes on the eyelids of the creature. The witness raised his rifle to the creature and it immediately retreated into the forest, 20 to 40 yards away from the witness. The witness's wife was flashing the lights of the truck, having seen the creature, although not well, from the side view where the truck was parked, signaling the witness to come back. The wife described the animal to be hunched over significantly, approximately an estimated three feet from its true height. Although she could not see it in detail, she said she could see its shape in the bush and could see it moving throughout the encounter. He began to make his way back, however, every second step he took, trees would shake just 15 yards into the line. The tree shaking followed him all the way back to the truck where he got in. They immediately heard a deep woo sound several times. They heard a bang on the truck roof and sped a short distance away where they pulled over to see what had hit the truck. They found a large dinner plate sized clump of mud with grass in it as if it had been torn from the ground that had been lobbed at the truck and landed on the roof. They left the area for the night. The witness returned to the site of the encounter and found what he described to be a possible handprint in the mud on the cut line and some suspicious impressions. Although they did not show any distinct detail, only a large elongated but wide set of impressions. He also found trees which had been stripped of branches to about 7 feet high, and the bark was peeled down towards the ground. The sap was described as fresh, coming from the damaged area. The area was generally disturbed with broken branches and some upturned ground. The witness is an experienced hunter and outdoorsman and said he had never believed in Sasquatch until this encounter. He hopes to see another Sasquatch in more detail in the future. If this hunter does eventually come face to face with another 
another Sasquatch, I hope he will refrain from shooting it, as he is a rare species and therefore not covered by his hunting license. Number 1. My Ski Buddy Bigfoot Our final tale involves a man engaging in winter sports and coming across another man out in nature who he greeted in typically polite Canadian fashion. As he related the encounter, was cross country skiing and was trudging back to the parking lot at Ribbon Creek going south. I stopped in a clearing to rest a bit and check out the river, looking west. From the third tree up the hill on the other side of the clearing, I saw a big guy in a dark parka, who must have been snowshoeing, step out from behind the tree. I watched as he came down around the trees to the first row of trees beside the clearing. I watched as he crouched, reached out, and shook the first tree. Spruce tree, about 30 or so feet tall. After he shook the tree, he stepped back as the snow fell off of it. I was thinking, God, he's got big arms, must be a lineman. After the snow had fallen, he walked around the tree and into the clearing. I waved. He was about 85 to 90 yards away and started walking towards me. As he walked towards me, I began to realize that it isn't a big guy in a dark parka snowshoeing, and I think I went into shock. He walked up to about 18 to 20 yards away and stopped. We just stood there, looking at each other for about five minutes. When the shock wore off, at that point, I was thinking, he's really big, and if he wants to get me, he can. So I waved and started south back towards Ribbon Creek. I went a little ways and turned back and he was gone. I think he was just curious, not threatening at all. Just came out to have a look at me I guess. Never did tell anyone, just thought you could add me to the list of oh I know they're out there. There's something comforting that a man could get so close to Bigfoot and have such a relatively calm and pleasant encounter with the creature. The only thing that would have made that story better would be if Bigfoot had waved back. With that, our journey through the Canadian wilderness is complete. It's always nice to get a chance to talk about my home country. Which which despite what some commenters on our channel would have you believe, is part of North America. Trust me, we know what continent we're on, okay? The dark forces that run this evil dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to send you to perish in God's most desolate continent, Canada. I hope that we will meet again soon, so I can regale you with more tales of the macabre and the disturbing here on Top 5 Scary Videos.